Hey everyone, this is Lokahol and welcome to a brand new series all about crafting. Before we even touch a currency item, a fossil or harvest, we're going to be starting with the absolute basics. I feel like the reason that many players struggle to understand crafting is because they lack a foundational knowledge of how items themselves function. So in the first couple of episodes of this series, we're going to be discussing just that. Item bases, item mods, item level, influence, tags, and reasons for crafting. These words will all make sense before long. If you're an advanced player, I encourage you to stay and listen because I'd love to get some input from other knowledgeable players. Let's get started. In the first episode of this crafting series, I'm going to be speaking about item modifiers, item level, and how item level affects what type of modifiers an item can have. So, what is a modifier? With regards to items, a modifier, or mod for short, is any stat on an item. Life, resistance, damage to attacks, these are all modifiers or affixes. Explicit and implicit modifiers. Modifiers are broken up into explicit and implicit modifiers. Explicit modifiers are the main ones you can adjust when crafting. These are the ones that change with the rarity of an item. If you use a Chaos Orb on a rare item, the explicit modifiers will change or re-roll. An implicit modifier is a stat that is intrinsic to an item. It's on an item whether that item is normal, magic, rare or even unique. For example, life on a leather belt resistance on a two stone ring, or chance to maim on a vile axe. Something you also need to know is that explicit modifiers are broken up into two sections, prefixes and suffixes. But what is a prefix and what is a suffix and why are items rolled like this? There's no exact way to inherently know whether a mod is a prefix or a suffix unless you learn it over a period of time. A good way to learn this is by making sure you have the advanced mods active in your UI. Just go to Options, UI, and tick the Advanced Mods checkbox. Now, when you press Alt to bring up the mods, you'll see a lot more information. The name of the modifier, the tier, the range, the item level, as well as which mods are prefixes and which are suffixes. And don't worry, I will go over what all of those words mean. But first, magic items can have up to two mods, one prefix and one suffix. Rare items can have up to six mods, three prefixes and three suffixes. However, jewels, even when rare, can only have four mods two prefixes and two suffixes. Let's go over some prefixes and suffixes. These are the ones that I consider most important. Prefixes, we have life, mana, energy shield, evasion, armor, movement speed on boots, as well as added physical or elemental damage to attacks and spells. For suffixes, we have things like resistances, attributes, strength, dexterity, intelligence, crit chance, crit multi, cast and attack speed. There's a lot more, but for now, these are just some of the most important examples. So can you see why item mods need to be split into prefixes and suffixes? If a rare item could have six suffixes and zero prefixes, we could stack a ridiculous amount of resistance on a single item, or have boots with perfect movement speed and perfect energy shield and mana at first, this might seem like a bad thing, but having these two halves to an item actually works in our favor when crafting. So why is all of this so important? Being able to identify strong prefixes and suffixes separately means that you'll be able to identify the potential of an item more easily. For example, you might have an item with great resistances, but only 5 life and 1 to 2 physical damage to attacks. A less knowledgeable player might see this and think, oh well, that's pretty good, I wish it had more life though, and be done with it. They might even vendor it. But a player who understands how items work, 
we'd realize that the item has amazing suffixes, the resistances, and that the prefixes, life and physical damage, can be changed and improved without affecting the suffixes. This is why having mods broken into suffixes and prefixes is actually really great. You can have half a perfect item and turn it into a fully perfect item with crafting. So I encourage you, your homework for this week, go out and look at some of the items you're picking up and start learning which stats are prefixes and which are suffixes. Just be sure to activate advanced mods in the UI. If you want an extra brownie point, you can go on PODB and read through some of the modifiers yourself. Links in the description. Something I should add, an item cannot have two of the same mod. You can't have two mods that both add lightning resistance or two mods that add X amount to maximum life. This is true 99% of the time. There are some cases where it's not, but like I said, 99% of the time, you're never gonna have two suffixes that both add lightning resist. Item levels and tiers. Items that you find in the wild have a level, just like your character. Item levels are based on the level of the zone in which you found the item, as well as from the level of the monster that dropped it. I won't go into too much detail yet, but what you need to know is that higher level items can roll better mods with higher values. What is a mod tier? Modifiers on items can appear in different steps of value and have a range in which those modifier values can roll. For example, in this table, you can see that at the top we have tier 13 life, which is the lowest tier. This can roll three to nine maximum life. In the middle, we have tier five life, which can roll between 80 to 89 life. At the bottom, we have tier one life, the best tier, which can roll between 120 to 129 life. If a chess piece has tier one life, even if we use a divine orb on it, it will never roll below 120. Think of it like brackets. Each modifier has a value safely inside a bracket in which that mod can roll its numbers. It can never go above or below this number when we use a divine orb. Just to confuse you even more, different items have different tier values. For example, on boots, tier one life is 80 to 89, but on a chess piece, tier one life is 120 to 129. Just bear this in mind when looking at items because you don't wanna accidentally vendor boots with tier one life because you thought it was only tier five life. Understanding tiers is important because again, it helps us to see when we have a good item. Maybe you see a ring that has three resistances and life, but they're all tier six mods. It might be good enough for your build, but it's not an amazing item just because it has the right modifiers. They're not high tiers and the item could be much better. On the other hand, just because an item has six tier one mods doesn't mean it's good necessarily. We need to have the right modifiers with the right tiers. So when crafting, we will target specific mods with the highest tiers and we'll have a better idea of when an item is really good. And what about item level? What does that do? Looking at the same table after the name of the modifier and all modifiers have a specific name just by the way, we have a number. This number shows us what item level is required to have that tier of modifier appear on an item when crafting or identifying it. So if we ever want to hit tier one life on a chess piece, we'll need an item with an item level of 86. This is probably quite overwhelming, but I'll simplify it. In most cases, an item level of 86 is required to hit almost all modifiers and the highest tiers of those modifiers. Hopefully it's starting to make sense why all of this is so important to crafting. And I promise we will get to crafting, but again, if you don't understand these fundamentals, you're never going to learn how to craft properly. So just to recap, an item modifier 
This is a stat on an item such as life, resistance, damage, what have you. These are broken up into prefixes, suffixes, and implicits. Item level. This is the level of an item which determines which modifiers and which tiers of those modifiers can appear on an item. Mod tier. These are the range of values that can appear on a specific mod of an item. Tier 1 is the highest tier, although tier 0 mods do exist in some special cases. That's going to be it for this video. I'm sure that was a lot, but once you get the hang of it, it'll come totally naturally and inform every decision you make while crafting. In the next episode, we're going to be covering item bases. Be sure to leave any questions or comments you have below. I'm happy to answer any questions. We've got a really great community of very helpful people. So don't be embarrassed if you've got a very seemingly basic question. People are very happy to help. I'm very happy to help. Take care. Stay safe in Path of Exile and real life. This is Local. Have a great day. Bye. Exile, you're making me nervous.